Hello, my name is RJ, and today I'm going to be giving you an overview into what a map is and how you're going to be using it for Project 5. So, what exactly is a map? A map is a data structure that maps keys to values, um, and these keys have to be unique. So you can only have one key, um, one key that is cat in the entire map, one key that is dog in the entire map, etc., etc. So one way we can think about a map is kind of like an array. So as you can see here, um, you should remember, you know, arrays have indices, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, and these indices, when you index into the array, you get back 7, right? So a map works in a similar way, where you can index using uh, some keyword, or some key. It doesn't even necessarily have to be a word. So here we have cat, which will return 4, and you have dog, which will return 7, etc., etc. Um... So yeah, overall, a uh, map is data structure that maps keys to values, and these keys have to be unique. Um, and it's kind of like an array. So if we take a look at the code right over here, so this is how we might define a map, right? So we have map, the keys are of type string, which you can see right here, and they're being mapped to values that are doubles. And we've named this map words. So similar to how we might add something into an array, like we see right here. Um, we can add a value to a map, just like in line 21. So what this is saying is at the key hello, we're going to make that one, just as like when we would say uh, word at index zero is equal to one if this were an array. So let's go ahead and run this and see what it prints out. So down here, map at hello is equal to one, which is exactly what we would expect. Uh, which is great. So I'm making this analogy to an array um, just because that's easy to start to get your bearings as to what a map is, but what's really happening under the hood is, like I said, we're mapping keys to values. Um, these are being stored as pairs, um, which we will show you right here. So map store uh, the standard pair type. This uh, essentially glues a key to a value, um, and what we call this in Computer science is a tuple, which is a fixed size heterogeneous container. Um, so let's see what this is saying right here. So we have a pair right here mapping a string to a double, and we're calling this a tuple. And then we're setting the first part, so the key, to the string world. And this works because we've defined up here that the key is going to be a string, right? So then we're setting the second part of this pair to be equal to 2 which works because we defined the second part of the pair to be a double, right? So these three lines, what we've done is we've made this pair. And then in this final line, what we're doing right here is we are inserting this tuple into the map. So this works similar to uh, what we were doing in line 21. What it's doing is it's just adding this pair uh, into the map, but it's just done with different syntax. Now, if we take a look at these next lines, let's discuss exactly what's going on here. So just as what we had done in line 27 to 30, what we were doing is making a pair and inserting that into the map. What we're doing in line 33 is we're doing the same thing. We're inserting a pair, but again, with just different syntax. So you can see these curly braces. What's happening here is this first part of the curly brace is the key, and the second part of the curly brace is the value. So this will insert pi being mapped to 3.14159 into our map. The next thing we're going to take a look at is how we might traverse over a map. In the last project, you use iterators to traverse over a list, um, and we can do something very similar for traversing over a map. So if we look at lines 38 and 39, you'll see here we have an iterator um, to a map that maps from a string to a double. Um, and this is starting at the beginning. And then this is very similar to other for loops that you've seen. And so one way we can think about that is we have this iterator i over here pointing at the very beginning of this map. And we can imagine that it's going to be moving through the map um, over the course of this for loop. Another thing that we can do is what you're seeing in line 41 here. You can use auto i, which will infer the type of the iterator, um, which can be really helpful for inferring the type of this map. Um, and it will just loop over all of the contents of this map that we've defined as words. Um, let's go ahead and run this and see what the output is. 
So one thing that you'll notice is that, unlike what I have written here, it appears that our map seems to have been sorted in some way. So this is actually a very important quality of the map that you'll be using for Project 5, is that when you insert these elements, they don't go in order of being entered. What's happening is that they're going to be sorted based on the keys. And so even though we put world in before we put pi, because pi is alphabet, comes before world in the alphabet, it's going to go hello, and then pi, and then world. Just as you see here, and just as you see in the output of our code. So using these for loops, we can also search over our entire map and see if there is a value or a key in our map that matches something that we're searching for. So if we take a look at line 48, um, you'll see that we have auto found IT or iterator. So you go to words.find at pi. So what's happening here is find is looping over the contents of the map to see if there is a key um, that is the string pi. So the way find works is it loops over the entirety of the map and it tries to find a key that matches uh, the string that you're giving it, like we see right here. And if it finds um, the keyword that you're looking for, it'll return an iterator to that element of the map. But if it doesn't find what you're looking for, which I can show you right here, if it doesn't find the key that you're looking for, what it's going to do is return an iterator to the end. Um, as opposed to an iterator to any element that would be in the map. So what we see in line 51 to 55 is if this found it iterator is not equal to words.end, what's it saying is if we have seen this in, if we were able to find this within the map, then we can go ahead and print out um, the word and its number. Now on the converse, I'm going to add this other case that I just made. So on the converse, if we are not able to find it, it'll return an iterator to the end of the map. Um, so for the second case that I put in at line 49, that should fall into this conditional right here and print out, I could not find it. So again, if we go ahead and run our code, we'll see that they found pi 3.1415. So that's this case here at line 51, but they could not find whatever the second case was here at line 57 because the not found iterator was equal to the end of the map, right? So one final thing to know about maps is that when we're using the bracket notation that we saw up here in line 21, if that keyword is not yet found in the map, what those brackets are gonna do is make a new element uh, with that key. So finally, if we go ahead and run line 64, this is being initialized to uh, zero, even though we didn't give it any sort of value. When we accessed it with the string bleh, we just get zero there. This is because if the value type uh, is numeric, it will always be zero by default. Now, if we were to have a map that was mapping a string to a string, now in line 66, what we're doing is we're indexing into this other example map which maps strings to strings, if we index it um, without adding anything to this map beforehand, we should get an empty string, which is a little bit more difficult to see in this example, but it's exactly what we expected. There's nothing there, it's an empty string. So finally, two other things that you should know about the map data structure is that it has a dot size, just as all the other data structures we've dealt with so far have as well as a dot empty. So if we run this code, we'll see that words.size is three because we have input three keys at this point. And that means that it is not empty. And so it's going to print this I'm not empty string right here. Okay, so in summary, today we learned about maps and a few things we learned were that maps store pairs. And we can think of these pairs as mapping some key to some value these uh, pairs are sorted by the key. A map can make use of iterators to loop over uh, elements of the map or to uh, point to an element of the map. 
Maps include .find, which can help you search for keywords in a map. And Maps also include standard data structure functions, such as the brackets uh, size, empty, uh, begin, or end. You will be using uh, the map data structure to implement your project five. So hopefully this tutorial helped you out. Best of luck and uh, see you soon.